Welcome back everyone to Kazaridox, I'm your host, Mr. Union of People's Jurgas Lover. But we gotta talk about Afghans, Afghans. Prized across the planet by both regal nobles and poor laborers alike, Afghan textiles are some of the finest examples of garment making in the world. With local agricultural products and animal produce being used in the, re in the creation as both one of our main exports and domestic industries. With silks, yarns, leathers, and threads sourced from all over the country in its various handicraft markets, the beauty and craftsmanship of our artisanal textile products has been matched by most, leading to this traditional industry being one of the main pillars of our economy. Using making everything from our para Parahan Tunbams, Karukals, Takiyas, Farak or Kat Partugs, Barkas, and other folk clothing from the various tribes and ethnic groups like the bright dress of the Hazara, or the subdued Nuristani dresses, all the way to our world-famous decorative rugs that often tell stories within their weave of our infamously comfortable but whole-filled blankets, which are also all decorated occasionally in gold, silver, mirror shards, and lapis luzuli, or lazuli, to impart value and status on special garments and other textile creations. These garments are the envy of most. With this historical industry supporting our economy and our culture at once, we're more than happy to continue funding and subsidizing a textile market for the foreseeable future. From the fields to the loom to the market, no value shall be lost. Fantastic. We could use another civvy as we only have eight now. Which is honestly better than nothing. We're making basic uh, infantry equipment. And then the Afghan Jazail, which is actually worse. So, But we have quite a deficit, so... Once the deficit is gone, we're going to get rid of this and start moving stuff up here. We're aiding the Afghan agricultural... Uh, agriculture with Anjuman i Zemi Daran. So we got a couple focuses still to do. Which you did read about healing the wounds last time, but we could introduce land reforms. Not bad. Or we could do Legacy of the Hijrat. Baka Khan and his followers were one of the first political refugees to arrive in Afghanistan following Emir Habibullah's decision to welcome Muslims fleeing oppressive policies in British India. Called the Hijrat, the Emir graciously allowed these exiles to find a new home in Afghanistan, a rift. That's grown between the native Afghans and these disgraced, or <coughs> displaced, Hijrat communities. We should move to amend this divide and celebrate the legacy of these exiles in addition to promoting Afghanistan as a safe haven for our wayward brothers in India and abroad. Entry to land reform. Presented primarily by the members of the Kalk and uh, Parcham, these two parties have advocated for land reform to redistribute the land held by wealthy landowners to poor proletarian masses. Though far from more overtly a revolutionary and socialist a policy than uh, Baka, Bacha Khan was urged and comfortable making. Fearing retribution from the clergy and nobility that shares faith and heritage while holding great influence over the nation, most of these concerns have been eliminated or greatly reduced thanks to our recent successes as such. Baka Khan is yielded to the radical desires of his allies, and so the redistribution sh process shall begin in earnest, though Baka Khan is vowed to oversee the process in order to ensure it proceeds as peacefully as possible. Happy 1938, everybody. God, we've got nothing to uh, research, do we? Uh, emancipate the Forgotten Half. Versus enlighten the masses. Ooh, we can do that one immediately. In his fight for social reform within the Pashtun society, Baka Khan firmly believed in education as a way to elevate his people. We'll begin a massive education campaign to eradicate illiteracy within 20 years while preparing a new generation of future leaders and academics, or at least that's our goal. We should get every Afghan an unbiased, comprehensive, and free basic education, even if they have to walk uphill both ways through the deserts and snowy mountains to get there. That'd be great. Establish a new Afghan army now. Going against Baka Khan's strict adherence to pacifism, members of the Parcham and Kalk factions have gone behind his back by supporting a proposed geared around establishing a new Afghan army. Though the frontier Gandhi has howled and hollered against such a move, the coalition has overpowered him by appealing to the masses who fear outside invasion and imperialism and retribution to the hands of the British and Indians in Delhi. As so we first organized an official state-run armed forces shall rise to defend the revolution for better or for worse. And emancipate, emancipate the forgotten half. Despite making it half the population, women in Afghanistan have virtually no rights as it stands now, with whatever meager reforms Habibullah managed to squeeze to before his falling of being erased and reversed by Kalakani. Baka Khan and Socialist Coalition shall right this wrongs and begin to enact sweeping reforms and progressive advancements aimed at greatly improving the status of women's rights within Afghanistan, by ensuring the right to a sound and comprehensive education, banning forced marriage and child marriages, making women more involved within politics with the right to vote and hold office with the Jirgas, and generally ensuring them as equal rights on the whole while protecting them from violent crime and unjust harm, which uplift every last citizen in the nation so that all can support a revolutionary metamorphosis. Saving Pashtun from ruin, oh boy, under far-reaching socio-economic and cultural reforms. We've awakened the uh, political uh, uh, awareness of the Pashtun people and have invigorated their spirit under socialist and Islamic teachings hinged around progressive populism, egalitarianism, and modernism in tune with our long history tradition. And the pacifism of the frontier Gandhi, the Pashtun people have shackled themselves from stagnant tribalism as we all dash together to our new future stronger and more united than ever before. Fantastic. We still have a lot to do here, don't we? Ah, since we're here, we're going to get some more research done, shall we? Yes, please. Uh, 
and assembled the first Afghan Congress. With their initial reforms successful and a rule secured, members of the Pacham and Kalk have called for Congress to decide the future of the coalition in the wider nation. With the moderate Pacham and the Islamic allies, the extremist radicals within the Kalk faction and the Kodai Kidmagar of Pacha Khan himself, all in attendance and vying for the top spot, the coming meeting of the first Afghan Congress will determine the destiny of revolution going forward. The National Pastimes of Afghanistan Though a few foreign sports like cricket and football have found minor to middling popularity among the Afghani, nothing can stop. Uh, the sheer dominance that our local homegrown sports leagues hold, with the two most popular of these local sports being Buzkashi and Pelwani. Pelwani is one of the many names given a local type of wrestling practice not only in Afghanistan, but across the subcontinent. It's also called belt wrestling, or uh, the struggle in English. This form of traditional wrestling pulls both from Indian styles uh, like Malayuda, from Persian styles like Koshti, Pavelani, and most recently from Mongolia, Bok, and other similar forms from Central Asia and the steppe, and was largely popularized across the region thanks to living titans such as the Great Gama, uh, Brandev, Mishra, and Kodi uh, Ramurthy Naidu, to name a few, cementing Afghanistan as one of the few hotbeds of traditional Asian wrestling. On the opposite hand, from these feats of human strength and skill stands other uh, national sport called the Abuzkashi. In which two teams on horseback compete to toss a sharp sheep or goat carcass into their respective goal. Gone and all throughout Central Asia are former occupiers among the Anglos try to replace the so called barbaric past with their own version they call Polo, but the latter never took off outside the wealthy elite and Afghan nobility while Buzkashi is played by the masses, especially among the tribal clans. Not only playing these sports on their own, both Buzkashi and Afghan wrestling are included in the news attempts at our nation to work diplomatically with their outside world as professional and minor league nations or uh, minor leagues are created with their nomadic brethren in places like Central Asia, the Middle East, South Asia, and even as far as Eastern Europe and the steppe in order to compete on an international level while strengthening our similar culture among these foreign kin. Commonly practiced by young men and often seen as a rite of passage, these sports are central pillars to a traditional Afghan culture and they shall stay in such an honor place thanks to our support and our continued efforts to further popularize these sports not only across the nation but our wider sphere of influence as well. Nothing like a day in the saddle or a night on the mat. And the world is falling apart. It's 1939. Uh, we have, what do we have? The Russian Socialist Republic. We have the Ukrainian Socialist Republic. Why are these highlighted? Did I do something here? Hello? Huh. Um, of course, we have the French Revolutionary Syndicate, the Union of Britain, CNT FAI. The Ottoman Empire is getting attacked by the Socialist Republic of Iran and Syria and whatnot. It's turning into quite a red world. India is killing itself, but the first Afghan Congress assembles. Oh. And the Reds are doing well, they're doing okay, as normal in America. Party members and Jirga delegates from across the nation have arrived in the Kabul to attend Afghanistan's first Socialist Congress so the nation can vote on who shall lead the government into the future now that the foundations of the revolution are largely secure. The delegates of the modern Parchamp faction stress the importance of forming a united front built on modern social reforms in line with Islam to ease Afghanistan's socialist transition while focusing on urban development and taking inspiration from other leftists in Asia and in the Arab world. Sitting Kudai Getmagar, members remind the Congress of the achievements and of Bacha Khan's pacifist and progressive teachings hinging around the peaceful cooperation and unity between Muslims and Hindus across the subcontinent while walking a middle line for unity and mass appeal. Finally, the radical Nur Muhammad Taraki has delivered a fiery speech on behalf of this Kalk faction of Afghan Jacobins and Leninists calling for total revolution, with a compromise in order to fully transform Afghan society no matter the cost, while breaking from traditionalism and religion altogether with a strong role and agrarian focus. With the delegates casting their votes in this historical election, it's clear that the Parchamat, who over the moderates, become cynicals, the Kudai Kit Magar rally the faithful, and the Kalkists win the support of the masses. So basically, totalists. Syndicalist, radical socialist. I kind of want to go down the uh, sin, uh, not syndicalist, the radical socialist path. That's what we've been doing, and uh, we get the guidance under the guidance of the King of the Chiefs, which is not bad. Um, we could choose either towards Indian unification, which I kind of like, or versus securing an independent Pashunistan. Pashunistan. So unite the subcontinent depending on the state of affairs in India, which I kind of like. Which I think it's pretty cool. Um, this is syndicalist, which is still not bad. You still get claims of Peshawar, Keta. Dal Bandin and Baluchistan, which I kind of want. You're going to have claims no matter what. Peace and the Pashtunistan. So it's Indian unification. I know we're supposed to be very peaceful and whatnot, but still. Or we can keep going down the line here. Um, I do want to unite this, so. though. Uh, let's go with this route. So. Uh, battling most of the nation against his radical rivals, Bacha Khan and his Kudai Kidmatgar have handily maintained the rule, having been elected in their own fair uh, right. Uh, in their own right, fair and square. Well, the nation behind them, and with their extremist allies weaker than ever, and rapidly losing their usefulness to boot, the frontier Gandhi and the Red Shirt shall bring about peaceful, moderate socialism to all the Pashtuns in the wider subcontinent, while spreading the tenets of pacifism and the Hindu-Muslim unity for all to behold and benefit from, expel radicals from the coalition. 
While they helped us lay out the foundation of the socialist government, we now largely run alone. The division between the Calchists and the Pachamite factions have nearly brought the nation to ruin with their endless bickering and refusal to cooperate or compromise. With Kudai Kitmagar's uh, dominant position within the government fully secured by a mandate of the Congress and the masses, will finally move to expel these more radical, problematic, and unpredictable elements within the party in order to secure a stronger, reunited, and more obedient coalition. Yay. We're supposed to be peaceful with what we're supposed to do here, as I really want to do towards Indian unification, which I think would be fantastic. Bogus so good war with them when he secured independent Pashtunistan. Marching against a tyrant Kalakani and saving the nation from your ruin, Baka Khan has done much to elevate the Pashtun people. Endeavoring to do right by his own people once and for all, Abdul Ghaffar Khan has decided to abandon his idea of Indian unity in order to pursue the idea of Pashtunistan, a nation that encompasses all Pashtuns under one banner. Woo hoo! Which hopefully we do okay with. As we are researching as fast as we possibly can, which is not bad. Um, so, we're still going to unite everyone under one banner, though. Bridging the rural urban divide, the Pachamites had used their support among the urban cities while the Kalkists appealed to the poor farmers within the countryside. Instead of playing sides, Pacha Khan will unite the divided Afghan people, focusing on both halves equally in order to uplift the united whole together. Comprehensive of guerrilla reforms. Utilizing the moderate remnants of the Kalkists and the Pachamites still within the coalition, we shall force these former rivals to work <clears throat> together in order to accomplish the land reforms both, they both rapidly supported during their, our rise and that Afghanistan so desperately needs if the revolution and our people to, are to survive. I really want to do this one, but we don't need the extra bonus, right? This political power and war sport would be nice, but we actually already have 100% war sport anyways. Eventually, under the guidance of the King of the Chiefs, freeing Afghanistan from the clutches of the bandit King Kalakani, Abdul Ghaffar Khan, the Chief of Kings, and her own frontier Gandhi, has led a social and spiritual revolution to save Afghanistan from its total stress destruction. By Sam. The Pashtuns, along with the rest of the Afghanistan, and perhaps even the rest of the subcontinent, have brought the paradise and under future guidance. We shall build a peaceful and united utopia that brings together all faiths and all ethnicities in our very region with progressive brilliance that shall truly last the test of time. Get more political power. Uh, party popular stability modified growth. Ooh, look at that. And this gives us a unique national focus, peace in Pashtunistan, which hopefully doesn't, which hopefully is not removed when we uh, go to war with other people. But you never know. What do we got here? Nice. What do we got here? Better arty? Nice. And we're... I always go superior firepower because it's the best one. I mean, mobile warfare is not bad, but we have no tanks. And we have horses. So... Actually, with this one, mass mobilization... Which one is it? One of these tactics is banned in multiplayer. Do you have operations? No. Operational concentration. Vast offensives. Combo with is pretty nice. Breakthrough priority? No. Mechanized wave, continuous offensive, guerrilla warfare, recover rate, that's very strong recovery, plus 0.2, yeah, human wave offensives are kind of funny, large front offenses, infantry, offenses. oh, oh, plus 0.3, insane amount of recovery, which is cool, but yeah, we're definitely doing superior firepower. Partial mobile, we lose a little bit more political power, but that's okay with us, we still get 1.3 every single day. And at least now we can use five of our civvies for stuff here, which is awesome. Lots of cavalry, and they'll throw in some artillery uh, for all, all this stuff. What do we got here? Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Get a claim, because these guys are fighting each other anyway, so we might as well try to help them out by killing them off. Because then we'll justify immediately, if we can. We'll take as much as we can from this group here. And honestly, if we can unite with these guys, or maybe, maybe unite the continent, the subcontinent, that might be the best thing to do. Support the Mahatma, divided government, French military mission. Yeah, we like each other, so. Uh, uh, yeah, that seems pretty good. Because we have enough artillery for now. We need more guns and trucks, but we're working on it, you know? We have no rubber, but that's okay. I don't want to give up a civvy, because we're still building up ourselves here and whatnot. Of course, we would be going to war with the Entente, but do we really care? Honestly, no. Hope oh, the socialists in Tehran win, or Iran, because they're doing pretty well against Istanbul, back to overall. Cairo Axis. Um, how are we doing? Third International Mexico is trying to beat up Huey Long. 
Constitutional American Republic are actually doing decently. They've not lost too much land, even though they're losing Mississippi and Florida and whatnot. Or Alabama, not Mississippi. Oh. But the Pacific states took out Baja, uh, California. Go figure. And Alaska exists. Principality of Liechtenstein, Alaska. What the heck? Hello? Mm. They're Donald Adria Bund. What the heck? Well, whatever. Support weapons, nice. 1939, get better arty. We already did. Fantastic. More construction speed, please. Thank you very much. Breakthrough, yes. Oh, white really has been. Cool. Could we hold out here against these guys? Maybe. Eleven Division should be able to hold up up there. I think I'm going to add in because this is more difficult to defend here. We're going to add the artillery to these divisions. These are they're all this division. So get rid of that for now. Get rid of that too. All right. Oh wait, but if we wait. We could just do this, but we don't have the army XP for that, huh? The division shouldn't be too good. We might want to wait, though. Hmm. Decisions. Decisions. Of course, we do get defense on core territory. Which is why we'll go something us is better, better required garrisons. 100% stability, 100% war support. Just a few years ago, our nation was on the brink of collapse and ruin, and Kabul was sacked. But now we're doing better. Industry, very good. Produce, a produce, a produce. And that's what we can add down here. Conference of Agrarian Reforms. Another guidance of the King of Chiefs. More political power. Party popularity stability modifier. More maximum command power, which doesn't really matter to us too much. Is that the only focuses we can do here? Oh, we got Afghanistan on the world stage. Oh, look at that. Where the political situation finally stabilized, we can look outwards with, towards Afghanistan's role in the wider world. Utilizing our unique position at the crossroads of Asia, the mighty Afghan eagle will finally take flight. We'll look to the west with our old allies in Berlin and Constantinople, forging alliances with our Islamic brethren in the north and meeting the emerging nations of the east. Oh, I should have done so a while ago. Also, we rebuild the Afghan royal army. With the initial investments of the Emir Habibullah, the Afghan army has made nascent efforts toward the modernization of equipment and tactics. Where the new government entrenched, we should look to dictate the direction of our armed forces towards modernity or tradition. Well, we can't do this one. And reviving the Afghan Air Force, because we have no navy. Although we had had the Air Force of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan since Abdullah's Habibullah's reign during the early 20s, the few biplanes and other great war routes we did have were all mostly destroyed in the conflict against the British during the Anglo-Afghan Wars. The Afghan Air Force must be revived from the ashes and sinners it currently finds itself in. We must take to the skies if we're to defend our homes. Yeah, absolutely. In the meantime, though, entrenchment, that's not bad. Attack defense of core territory. I want speed. So we're going to focus on speed. Unless there's something else here we're going to choose first. Oh, we get more stuff here. Artillery would be bad. More speed, but we have no armor. Organization would be nice. More population would be nice. Uh, organization recovery rate. School psychology. Shah Mahmoud Ghazi. Absolutely. And we also need way more ar army XP, too. So. Oh, wait. He didn't give us more army XP. Oh, crap. I thought this gave us uh, army XP. Well, crap. We're going to eat it anyways. You better suck on that... Uh, Organization, because now you're 73. Nice. So, if we go to war, how bad is it going to be for us? Is there a river here? I think there might be a river here. Do they attack us immediately? Um, can we push out here? 89. Yeah, I don't think we can push out just immediately yet. Oh, you're on, you called it all volunteers, huh? Yeah, I don't think we'll do too much there. Uh, I'm going to decline that. I'm going to start rebuilding the Afghan army. Afghanistan. -y. So they're not really attacking, which kind of sucks. Um, can you do anything here, maybe? 70? What do they have here? Yeah. It's over River Indo Mountain, which is pretty god awful. Oh, we'll do some funky stuff here. See what the Germans can do for us. Because we can't do very much right now. We'll get some guns from them. But we can talk about a lot of this stuff. Trucks? Yes. Oh, thanks, German guys. Come help us out. Hey, got decent trunks now. Uh, what do we got here? Sure. So, hiring Western officers. In order to have a fighting force, 
and that can perform well against. Our future adversaries, we must expand our circle of trust and cooperation. By bringing in Western officials with expertise in training military to theory, we begin refining a travel army to a more cohesive force. Study foreign arms. Uh, what is this? Martini Henry Rifles. <coughs> in 1880, a British engineer under the service of Amir Abdul Rahman helped create a modern rifle for the nation. Used since the uh, Second Anglo Afghan War, the Martini Henry Rifle is wielded by a number of our fighting Afghan men. We'll expand upon his rifle factory to build a modern arsenal. That'd be great. And then. Afghan chain of command. Consumed by bickering and self-serving tribal leaders, our current chain of command is not sufficient. This, these men, while powerful, were often unreliable and cannot be trusted to follow orders to the best extent. We'll create a modern chain of command with competent and especially loyal officers. And implement the Hasht Nafadi. We need more men to keep our war machine running. The Hasht Nafadi, or 8th person, is a conscription plan, which allows tribal leaders to pick out one out of every 8th person to serve the military as their teeth to their nation. Oh, hello. Well, goodbye, German soldiers. Goodbye. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, not too much, huh? Oh, well, since we're here. Oh, relief of command. Oh, that's different. Ideological loyalty. Oh, I definitely do something up. There you go. That's what we want. That's garrisons. There you go. Now we're out of Artie. Well, actually, we're not out of Artie. You're not out of guns, though. We need Mountaineers, too. Um, after this, what do we have? Choosing a foreign military mission, huh? Building a war machine. In order to keep up with industrial yards in the western cities that churn out weapons with war with ease, we need to create uh, our own factories and plants to create a self-sufficient army. Without these measures in place, we'll be at the mercy of foreign interlopers and profiteers. This cannot be if we were to triumph in the coming conflict. Legacy of Ginnabad. Or no. Wait, how can you do this one? Oh. Because you can do both these. Uh, the metal of our fighting men is in our blood. Our Hotaki ancestors at Gonabad, rather the Safavid interlopers of Marshan Isfahan. The spirit of Mahmud Hotaki lives in his descendants, and his legacy shows us that we can triumph against any foe despite the odds. And modern warfare. Huh, <laughs> that's funny. The world of warfare is always changing. While our army may do the world standard now, the most beneficial change we have is made, and we have ensured that we have the military infrastructure to continue to adapt to a volatile world. Our war colleges and are rife with our biggest, brightest minds. And will continue to protect Afghanistan for years to come. What the heck? Uh, years to come? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the martial tribes of Afghanistan, most notably the Pashtun, the Jezai, is a beloved cultural icon as well as a dependable weapon. Handcrafted and passed down through the generations, most of our young men are familiar with these flintlocks and prefer to use them above everything else. However, with the development of the world around us, the Jezai is quickly becoming more and more of a relic. While the craftsmanship cannot be denied, they cannot live up to the modern counterparts on the battlefield. This was shown in full display during the recent war against the Angles, with the war's weapons being outranged by more the more reliable and standardized Lee Enfield rifles. While we may have triumphed against the British once, we cannot be complacent. With the new reforms to the Afghan army, it's with a heavy heart that we must standardize the we army's weapons and do away with the Jezail in our army. We're already being met with resistance, as senior military meetings explode into vicious arguments. Several tribe leaders and more conservative members of the army have been in uproar over these changes, pledging to resist such developments that destroy the heritage of our nation. Yep, we cannot control the world around us, and if we are to protect the sovereignty of our nation, we must ensure that every young man in our army has the tools he needs to defend our beloved country. Perhaps they can still be used for military parades. Yeah, there you go. There's a solution for that. Generic. I love generic stuff. Oh, look at that. Mechanized armor, special forces, fuel consumption, plane stuff. Oh, Snoopy. Skilled pilots. I might just click on that just to get skilled pilots, but maybe not. We need some breakthrough. City Foreign Arms. With initial attaches from our friends in the West arriving in Kabul, we must push further for, for further cooperation between our two nations. We can petition them for licensing rights uh, to the weapons and study them further to improve our own weapons initiatives. That's fine. They go to war with them. It's fine. Whatever. On time's moving to reclaim Europe. Yeah, hey, guys. Choosing a foreign military mission. We must choose a foreign a nation to help us reform our antiquated armed forces, and due to the position of the crossroads of worlds tied with our past relationship with many leading powers, so let us have you pick the litter of for who we wish to escape from. Whether we are allied with new friends like Germany and Japan, or old foes like Russia and Gantan, we have no shortage of options. All we must now do is choose. Invite the Third International under the guise of a Turkish mission. Look at that. That would be fantastic. Construction, good. Um, 
replacing what was lost, with the state now fully supporting the rebirth and for reformation of the Afghan Armed Forces, or Air Force. Now comes the Herculean task of modernizing and refitting our decaying air fleet of damaged antiques and relics of the Great War that would probably be more useful in a museum than in a dogfight, but working with foreign contacts, we should rebuild the Afghan air fleet and prepare the nation for the wonders of modern aeronautical warfare. Meet the Fokkers. By working with a new contact throughout the Reich's pack, we map through the German military attaché, we should procure some of the best aircraft in the world to protect our skies over Kabul and beyond, striking up deals with companies like Aviatik, Albatross, Fokker, Halberstadt, Junkers, Fals, Roland, Siemens, Schuch, Dugart, Dornier, Hen Henkel, Messerschmitt, and more we shall assemble the greatest air fleet Asia has ever seen. Paving the Kabul airfield. A carrying airfield in Kabul is nothing more than a strip of dirt and sand used primarily by the German attaché and the embassy staff. Using state funds and some grants from Berlin, we will greatly expand this airfield and bring it up to modern standards, officially creating the Kabul International Airport for domestic, foreign, civilian, and military use that a growing nation desperately needs. Domestic pilot training. In order to train the next generation of Afghani fighter aces, we'll need some help. By finding foreign experts from our friends across the German sphere, using mercenaries and pilots for hires, supplements where we must, we should create a new off group of officers, schools, and pilot training programs in order to ensure our planes are thrown by, flown by the best Pashtuns around the world. I really do want to attack, but there's just no point to. And we need Mountaineers too. So, um, I'm very surprised that they don't want to attack us. They're doing okay against the Bharati economy, but it could be better. Uh, Afghanistan's raiding raptors. Afghans have long a proud history of raiding and guerrilla warfare for long as our isolated nation fought off foes and would-be conquerors many times their own size. We will incorporate these hit and run tactics in our modern age of war air warfare. Uh, we now find ourselves in closely, supportly, closely supporting our land forces with lightning fast ground attacks and air raids in order to keep our foes forever on the back foot. Hurling over, hurl, hurling over the mountaintops. The mountainous Afghan landscape makes. Uh, landing and refueling difficult, not to mention the massive pain is upkeep landing strips and aeronautical instruments and machinery in our hot and windy climate. Work towards making plans that can fly over the mountain ranges with ease and focus on long-range developments like detachable fuel canisters and lighter airframes in order to build in the mountains to the will of the heavens. I'm actually going to throw you guys here just in case, because you can actually go across the river, which is pretty nice. Uh, sure. Right here? Nope. Okay. The Golden Eagle of our skies. Focus on the creation of light, reliable aircraft to accommodate our airports and model after the strategies and successes of our national bird symbol, the Great Golden Eagles of Central Asia. With a lighter foc uh, focus on lighter frames and longer ranges, we shall create an air fleet of ever watchful raptors. <laughs> a birth of Afghan uh, uh, Navy. Landlocked for centuries, a great Afghan nation that touches the warm waters of the Indian Ocean. We shall pour resources into the creation of a capable Afghan Navy to project our influence across Asia in ways we have not done since the days of the Mughals. It's been the port of Karachi. The port of Karachi is one of the busiest ports in South Asia and now flies a flag of a proud Afghan state. With his recent acquisition, we now have access to a major port that can be used to facilitate trade as well as house our navy. Expanding this port will lead to Karachi to become an even greater boon for us, an Afghan merchant marine. For millennia, the main source of trade in our nation has been along our mountain passes. Once, we were the greatest custodians of the Silk Road. Our access to the ocean has made us no longer limited to the caravan routes that come into the landlocked nation. We are able to project our trading influence from the Horn of Africa to the Indonesian archipelago. The creation of an Afghan merchant marine will help us strengthen this influence. They really don't want to fight us, do they? This is odd. You know, you think they, they might want to. Milk on it. Yeah, I mean, we just can't force them out. Hmm. We need an Air Force. War economy? What do they have done here? Industrial. Okay, why not? Sure. Hey, we got 16 factories. It's not too bad, though. Uh, so we got all these done. done. We'll do the diplomatic stuff too, the Air Force stuff as well. Because truth be told, we're going to be here for a while looking east. Across the Wakhan Corridor lies the remains of, of the once formidable Chinese nation. Instability and corruption has left the nation to the devices of the Western powers, and the rising sun across the pond vitalized Afghanistan's influence on the world stage and gathered allies in our battle against foreign oppression. We look towards East and China and forge diplomatic ties with these emergent nations. Absolutely. Happy 1939, everybody. Small basic airframes. Yes, we will have a tiny burgeoning air force eventually. Uh, sure. And the next one, then we'll do some mountaineer stuff. There you go. What if we separated half of you guys when we said, go to Kabul. Have fun. Goodbye. Duchess Indies. Will they be poised to attack us? Yeah, yes, it would. Look at that. I'm okay with this. We're in the mountains, we're hanging out. Oh wow, a lot of enemies here. You know what? We'll send one more back. Just just to engage them. Just to have a toy with them. If they want to. So they have 
Four divisions attacking us. Because I do want this guy to get more experience. Organizer, infantry leader, mountaineer, very good stuff like that. Uh, sure, Japan. Sure, why not? And then, in the Devetum Plateau. While the United Brothers of the Faith, the mountainous kingdoms of the Himalaya serve as an important barrier against imperialist incursions into the Eastern world. We'll bring these hermit kingdoms out from the mountainous isolation and offer our support in their tenuous struggle for independence. Through our cooperation, we'll forge an alliance of different faiths and cultures, all united against foreign encroachment. That's this one. And the Tarim Basins. Uh, sure. With the collapse of the Qing hegemony in China, the western province of Xinjiang is falling into a state of civil war. For centuries, our Muslim bro brothers in this region have been subjected to Chinese colonialism. We will support our brothers in the righteous struggle to reverse nearly three centuries of oppression. Caster dying to China. While foreign powers encroach on the sovereignty of China, the nation lies in a state of disarray. Corrupt warlords, foreign puppets, and drug pushers fight to the death, while the Japanese and Western empires look hungry on the lands of the Middle Kingdom. Whether home front secure, the Afghan nation will throw its support into the Chinese struggle and bring out a worthy ally in the shared struggle against imperialism. What is going on around here? There's a question though. Uh, sure, that's fine. So, we just did for a land doctrine this. So, all infantry, motorized, and mechanized. Does that include cavalry? It does include cavalry. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. So, what if we took you two out? Actually, could you do anything here? Probably not, in all honesty. Here, you guys go here. Fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're just gonna play with them a little bit. Because I like playing with them. And we're gonna grab you. Our Hui brethren. While they have been preferred to take the pragmatic stance towards sitting any sitting government in Beijing, the Malkliks of northwestern China find their days of relative independence unnumbered. The powerful but divided Mao warlords are threatened by rival governments who would seek to destroy both their independence and their Islamic faith. While for the Mao protection against the ambitious warlords who would seek to subjugate their Islamic brethren within the Hexi Corridor. Lion basks in the sun. An audience in Urga. Support Chinese sovereignty. It's abundantly clear that without a strong Chinese nation, the rest of the Eastern world will follow the dominoes of the schemes of foreign powers to secure the independence of Afghanistan and all of Asia. Our diplomats will reach out to the various governments and claim the Chinese mandate, or their back, uh, backing our two nations will carry the torch in the fight against foreign powers, or an audience in Urga. Much like Afghanistan, the Mongol nation has gone from an underdeveloped backwater to an emerging powerhouse in the Eastern world, recently the Mongolians. A form of the Brotherhood of Eurasia, an alliance that seeks to unite all of Asia into a kindred union. So you can join this righteous struggle, we'll send a delegation to Urga to support the Brotherhood. They have been attacking still here. Let's take a look. Will they do that? They're still attacking up there, which is good. Because we want to get that... Uh, I said Mountaineers. I said Mountaineers, by God. Oh, we already have Mountaineers. Somewhere here. Huh. Oh, crap. We'll keep doing that. And then what? Look north. Similar to Afghanistan, Turkestan is a rugged land deeply rooted in Islamic faith. In addition, both lands have served as an intermediary for some of history's greatest empires. If we're to lift Afghanistan to global prominence, we must first sort out the situation with their northern neighbors in Turkestan and contact with Bukhara. Among the nations of Turkestan, the government in Bukhara emerged from the strongest of the nations that have liberated themselves from the Russian yoke. While we offer the Bukharans material support during the independence war, our relations have been scarce as to not to provoke the Russians. With a shifting political climate, we'll once again make contact with our northern neighbors in Bukhara and then looking west. Oh. But well, we can't look to the west. If you want to worry about these, please go ahead, because we can't do these. God dang it. The bear awakens. Faction leader. A Bukhara Kabul pact? Well, I guess we'll have to do the march on Bukhara then. While well, we maintain a cordial relationship with the state of Turkestan, we can no longer stand by as a nation descends further into chaos. The Emir of Bukhara, Muhammad Alim Khan, has given Mujahideen brigands free reign in the countryside, which he used to launch raids in the Afghan territory. We will launch a campaign to wipe out these terrorists and reestablish rule of law in Turkestan, but. Hey, we're going to end the episode there because I'm going to need to take some time to actually uh, hold out here and figure out if we can actually push out someday. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll just see what else we can do in the third episode of us uh, playing as a Union Peoples, Union of Peoples, Jurgas. Thanks for watching. Have a great Afghani rest of your day.